So today's session is all about getting started with Grafana alerts. It's actually part of our series on Guide to Grafana 101. This is the second session in the Guide to Grafana 101 series. Uh, the last one was about building awesome visuals. And this one, as you know, is about alerting. This is an interactive session. So please feel free to ask questions at any time using the Q&A feature in Zoom. So there's two features. One is a chat and one is a Q&A. So please use the Q&A feature if you have questions. If you just have things to say, uh, use the chat feature. And uh, we have a team of dashboarding experts, including myself, to answer them at the end of today's session. So put those questions in as something uh, comes up to your mind. I'd also like to remind everyone that you will receive a recording of today's session along with code and links to resources as well as a slide deck that I'm going to use today. So don't worry if you forget to take uh, any notes or, or things like that. All right, so let's get into it. Uh, just a little bit about me before we get uh, started into what we're going to do in today's session. Uh, my name is Aftar. I'm from South Africa. I'm super interested in how to use technology to empower people. That's why I really love my job as a developer advocate here at Timescale. Uh, as part of my job, I learn about new technologies and just learning new things all the time, uh, like uh, alerting in Grafana and, and DevOps and monitoring. So if you want to follow along in that journey, I talk about what I learned on Twitter and on my website, Aftar.com. So you can check that out. Now, Today's session is going to have four parts. So the first part, we're going to look at alerting principles, take you through just uh, what you want to alert on, give everyone uh, some basic understanding of alerts before we delve into the second part, which is how alerts specifically function in Grafana. Then the bulk of today's session is going to be in part three, which is the let's code portion, where we're going to use a scenario of monitoring a production database and I'll define alerts for uptime, memory consumption, and disk usage on that database. Then I'll also set up popular notification channels to send alerts over things like Slack, Ops Genie, and PagerDuty, which are some examples of uh, software that you want to have alerts in. Uh, so that's something to get you excited for what's to come. And then in part four, I'm going to leave you with some resources so that you can uh, take action on your, by yourself. And we're going to, of course, answer your questions. So please put them in as you have them throughout the session. So let's get uh, into the first section, which is about alerting principles. Now, uh, just so that everyone is starting off on an equal setting, I know some people might be beginners at this, others are looking for more advanced material. Alerts are basically an important part of any monitoring system because they tell us when things go wrong and when things need human attention. Now this could be when something crashes, it could be when you're consuming too many resources, and it could be um, when there's an outage or when users are, are reporting performance degradation. Uh, this could be also, you know, increase in support tickets. You could alert on, on a number of things. So essentially, alerts help us to know about when things go wrong and get humans to take action as soon as possible. Now, there's some best practices for implementing alerts that I just wanted to mention to you. So the first one is to avoid over alerting. Now, really what this means is that, you know, only alert on something that requires immediate human input. Uh, if an engineer gets alerts too frequently, it really ceases to be useful and to serve its purpose as like something you should take uh, notice of. Uh, this goes for engineers like us in our day-to-day -day work, but also in our personal lives. I mean, think about when Facebook updates you about stuff that you don't care about, you wind up tuning out or just disabling alerts or worse, ignoring them. And uh, that can be really bad in a, in a you know a critical context where you know you need to take action when something is going wrong. So make sure to only use alerts on relevant things to avoid alert fatigue. And then the second thing is you want to use use case specific alerts. Now, what you alert on really depends on your scenario. So, for example, if you're uh, running a SaaS platform, you want to alert on things like site uptime, latency, things where you know like if the ability to provide your service um, degrades, you want to know about it. Uh, if you're, on the other hand, monitoring infrastructure, you want to monitor things like your database disk usage, the CPU and memory of your various hosts, as well as things like API errors on the uh, various uh, pieces of infrastructure talking to each other. 
So I want to hear from you in the chat. Uh, you know, what are you looking to monitor and use alerts for? Let us know in the chat, uh, and that'll be really useful in order to maybe contextualize some of the things that I'll be talking about in the second part of today's session. Uh, and of course, uh, please use the Q&A feature, different from the chat, to ask questions that we're going to answer at the end of today's session if anything is confusing or you have uh, things that you'd like to learn more about. OK, so that takes us to part one. Everyone knows about what alerts are supposed to do. Now let's take a look at how alerting works in Grafana. So in this section, I'm going to take a look at how alerts work in Grafana and their two constituent parts. So there's two parts. The first one is going to be about alert rules. And the second one is going to be about notification channels. And I'll also introduce alert states, which we'll examine more in section three of today's uh, technical session. I also realize that some people might be new to Grafana. So I recommend you check out session one that we did on creating awesome visuals. My colleague Lacey uh, just posted uh, the link in the chat for everyone to see. So you can uh, check that out uh, after today's session uh, for an introduction to visualization in Grafana. Fortunately, you don't need any viz knowledge for today's session. So uh, let's jump into how alerting works. Now, why would you want to use Grafana alerts? So the main reason is that you can run visualization and custom alerting all in one tool. So now most people know Grafana as a visualization tool. It also provides this alerting functionality to notify you of anomalies. And the main benefit is that you don't have the overhead of learning how to use another piece of software. And then you also don't have to integrate into your backend. You can have alerts right in your dashboards from when you're setting up things to monitor. Uh, some some uh, rules about how alerts work in Grafana. So the first one is that they are limited to graph visuals with time series output. So you can see in the screenshot that I put on the screen uh, here, you can only work use alerts on uh, graph visuals that have time series outputs. So you can't format the output as a table or something. And this is because alerts need to have this notion of time. Uh, you can't use a table output or anything like that. And uh, you also can't use alerts on other visualization types like gauges or single stats or something like that. Um, but the good news is two things. The first one is that uh, you're mainly dealing with time series data for alerts because you really want to monitor how something is changing over time, whether it's things like uptime, resource consumption at a certain point in time. And then uh, the second part is like you can turn things like gauges and single stats into a graph visual because usually those kinds of things uh, look at the last data point in a time series and the graph visual will just show you all the data points. So uh, there are ways to work around, you know, if you want to alert on different things to have them in the format that Grafana can handle it. Uh, the other thing to note is that Grafana does allow many different data sources and notification channels, but not all of them are supported. Uh, so you can look at the Grafana docs for a list of them. There's, there's quite a few that are supported things like Postgres, Prometheus, CloudWatch. For the demos today, I'm going to be using Timescale, which is based on top of Postgres as my data source. Surprise, surprise. Um, mainly because that's the one that I'm most familiar with and that I'm using in my monitoring system. So there's two parts of alerting in Grafana that you need to know about in order to understand the demo that we're going to do today. The first part is alert rules. Now, alert rules are probably the most important thing to understand. And these are conditions that you define for when the alert gets triggered and when you want to be notified. So here are some examples of alert rules, things like, you know, the last disusage is more than 90%. Uh, that's a threshold. You can also have thresholds. Uh, you can also have alerts that have um, a threshold being sustained, uh, sustained uh, passing of a certain threshold. So the example on screen here is like the average memory is greater than 90% for five consecutive minutes. Um, so that's, uh, that's another thing that's going to be um, explored more just now. And the third one is you don't just have to have thresholds for like upper bounds and lower bounds. You can also have a range where in this case, your average temperature might be outside a certain range for 10 minutes, or it could be inside a certain range. Um, you have all kinds of flexibility over exactly what you want to alert on using Grafana. Uh, then uh, let's take a look at an example rule in Grafana. So the first thing uh, you got to do is you have your name. So in this case, I have a descriptive name. 
Then what you want to do is look at the frequency of how often this rule is evaluated. So how rules in Grafana work is according to a scheduler. So you need to define how often that scheduler needs to evaluate whether this rule is true or false. And so here uh, you can set it to evaluate every uh, X number of minutes. So in this case, I chose one minute. And then the four period, which is to say, okay, how long should this rule be true for until we fire off a notification? And then, uh, then you specify the conditions. So uh, in this case, you choose your aggregate uh, function, max, average, min, last, time, percentage difference, things like that. Uh, and then you select the query uh, letter and the start and the end time. So for example, in this case, I'm monitoring uh, query A, which is talking about memory from five minutes ago until now. And I wanna know if this is above 90% uh, and this is the condition that I actually have. So that's a little bit of like how alerts actually work in Grafana, like the anatomy of it. We're gonna take a look at implementing that in a few minutes, but that's just to give you some uh, ideas. That's just to give you some idea of how it works and so that you're not surprised when I, when I do the demo. Okay, so that's alerting rules. Now let's take a look at alert notification channels. Now alerts notification channels are where alerts get sent once the rules are triggered. If you don't have any notification channels, the, rule, the alerts will only show up in Grafana, which is good, but you know, not everyone's looking at Grafana all the time. So you wanna have it in places where you can get people's attention. So usually you wanna have it where your team can see it. So this is a place like Slack or email or Discord or whatever communication tool you're using. So for example, in this case, I've selected Slack from this list of uh, notification channels that Grafana support. And here's an example of a notification in uh, Slack that shows me like, okay, this came from Grafana, tells me about what it's about and, and gives me some uh, uh, more information about what's actually going wrong. You also can have alerting uh, alerts sent through various uh, support tools. So I've got two on the screen and that I'm gonna to use today in the demo. One is called PagerDuty, very popular way to coordinate um, notifications through like text and calls and emails uh, for a whole team. And then the other one is OpsGenie, which uh, functions very similar to the way PagerDuty functions, again, using um, you know, coordinated uh, things like text and calls and whatnot. Uh, usually Grafana provides integrations using things like webhooks, uh, API keys, and there's a dozen uh, external services. And whenever we create an alert, we need to assign it to a notification channel. Uh, and we're gonna see that in part three where we're gonna basically define the messages that we want to be sent when these alerts get sent out. Okay, so that's the basics of alerts, rules and notification channels. I wanna take you through a little bit about alert states. We're gonna be delving into how exactly um, alerts move through different alert states later on in today's session when I, I start illustrating the examples. But there's really four main alert states that you need to know about. And the reason why alerts have states is that you can think of objects, alerts as objects that move through different states depending on the, the rule that's associated with them. So there's four states. The first one is okay. Uh, that means everything is okay. Uh, it's green, no action is needed. The second one is pending. Uh, that's when um, you have a rule that is true, but uh, the for clause has not been satisfied. Um, so basically we'll see in the first example that I'm gonna go through now, it's gonna be involving this pending state but it's basically an in-between state between alerting and okay, where things are not okay, but you haven't quite met the threshold for things to be alerting and for alerts to be sent out. So that's how you can think about it right now. Uh, then you have the red state alerting. This is where things are going wrong, notifications are being sent out. And then you have the fourth state, which is um, a separate state from alerting, which is no data for when there's no data to actually evaluate the alert rule this sometimes happens when you know pieces of infrastructure goes down or there might be a network latency and, and things like that. So these are the four alert states. Um, and now we're gonna go into the main part of today's session, which is actually taking you through how to implement alerts and notification channels. Uh, just a quick reminder, if you have any questions, please post them using the Q&A feature in Zoom and we'll answer them at the end of today's session.
So let's get into the fun part, which is let's code. I'm gonna get my keyboard out in front of me and uh, let's start to set some of these things up. Okay, so in this section, we're going to implement alerting for a very simple monitoring setup. Uh, and I'm also gonna give you a mental model for understanding how alerts work in Grafana, where we'll go through the life cycle of the alerts and how it moves through different states from start to finish. Um, so the scenario that I'm gonna use today is monitoring a production database. And uh, just for those of you who are interested, the scenario is basically monitoring this database using Prometheus, and I'm using Timescale, uh, the time series database, as a remote read and write for Prometheus. So what's happening is that the metrics are actually being scraped by Prometheus and then being written to Timescale uh, if you have any questions, there's a previous um, tutorial and webinar that we've done on how to set this up, uh, but there'll also be a link to how to set this up yourself at the end of, uh, in the resources section. Uh, so now that you understand how that works, in this demo, we're gonna basically create three different alerts for things that we're monitoring. And for each alert, we're gonna send them through a different notification channel. So the first alert that we're gonna create is about average memory consumption. And the rule here is gonna be where memory is greater than 90% over five minutes. And the channel we're gonna use is Slack. Then we're gonna take a look at disk usage where disk usage is greater than 80%. And the channel we're gonna use is pager duty. And the last one is gonna be about service aliveness where the rule here is basically is this database up or down? And that's the status that we're gonna monitor. And the channel here is gonna be obstiny. So that's an overview of what's gonna happen. Let's get into the first one, which is about uh, average memory consumption over uh, five minutes and the channel we're gonna use is gonna be Slack. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna exit out of um, my slide deck here and move into my Grafana dashboard. And what I have in front of me is just a simple Grafana dashboard that's monitoring the three metrics that I'm gonna create uh, alerts on. And then next to me in this second screen, I have my different notification channels. So I have Slack, I've got PagerDuty, and I've got Ops Genie here open so that we can see when notifications actually uh, pop up when alerts get sent out. So let's get started with this first one, which is about percentage memory use. So the way you add an alert to a Grafana uh, graph is you wanna edit it and you click this bell icon to uh, add the alert and you select create alert and then we here. Now this, um, this first example is showing the memory usage over time. And the goal here is to tell us when we have sustained high memory usage over a period of time. So we'll define that as the average memory consumption per minute to be greater than 90% for five consecutive minutes. So that's the rule that we're gonna do. Uh, the first thing we need to do is give our rule uh, a uh, descriptive name. So I'm gonna call it sustained high memory on TaxiDB. TaxiDB is just the name of the database that I'm monitoring. It's about taxis. For those of you who've done uh, the taxi tutorial and timescale, if not, uh, check it out in our docs. Then what we're gonna do is set a frequency for when the rule is gonna be evaluated. Um, so, um, so when the rule is gonna be evaluated, and uh, what we're gonna do here is evaluate it every one minute. So every one minute, Grafana is gonna run the process to check if this thing is true. And over here, I wanna have it for five minutes because that's uh, the, the period of time that we want. And what this does is basically uh, tell us how long this alert should fire for until we send out a notification. This prevents things like false positives. And it's especially useful for serious alerts that like wake people up in the night you wanna be sure that something is actually wrong. And so it's better to wait for a little bit, in this case, five minutes before we actually send out the alert to make sure that that alert condition is actually true. Speaking of alert conditions, now it's time to define the actual condition that we're gonna use. In this case, uh, you, this when, uh, it's, you can't change it, it's just here. So when the average, you, ch you choose an aggregate function. So I'm gonna choose average, I'm gonna keep it as average of a certain query. So in this case, Grafana has this query lettering system. So you can see when I go to my queries, this one is A. If I copy this, this one becomes B. Uh, you know, you can add C, D, E as you, as you like. Now, uh, going back to the alerting panel, we're gonna choose query A. And we notice that we want the average memory per minute. So in this case, I wanna monitor 
from one minute ago till now. You can also, um, you can also, um, sorry, I'm just looking at the questions coming in. Thank you to those putting in questions. We can, uh, we can answer them at the end. Um, so uh, yeah, one minute until now. You can also choose things like from uh, now minus one minute, now minus five minutes, which basically says from the first time until this last time. So say you want to monitor from 10 minutes ago till two minutes ago, uh, if you don't want to just uh, monitor on like the real time data that's coming in, uh, in case you have some lag for your data to be, to be inserted into your database. Um, then we want to know when this, uh, average memory is above 90%. So because I already have the graph set up in percentage, I can just type 90 here. Be careful sometimes, you know, you might have to type something like 0 0.9 or something depending on the actual format, but because I'm using um, percents uh, as the output, uh, it's gonna just be 90. And then we need to specify how the uh, no data and the error handling is handled. So in this case, uh, no data is basically when there's null values or there's no data to evaluate the rule. You can select it to be alerting or to keep the last data okay. I'm gonna keep it as no data because this actually tells me when I have no data versus when the alert rule is being triggered. And then if I have an execution error or a timeout or something like that, usually, usually alerting is good to keep here because you know that tells you something is wrong with the way you've set things up. Okay. So now uh, that we've actually set up this alerting rule, now we need to assign it a notification channel and the notification channel that I'm gonna use is Slack. So what I'm gonna do is navigate over to, so the way, what I've just done, let me just uh, go out of here. What I've just done is you go to the bell icon here and you go to notification channels. And then what you wanna do is set up a new notification channel. What I've done is just, I've navigated to the existing one that I've set up, which is Slack. Now, what you often want to do here is have a tiered notification system so that smaller alerts go to less serious places, in this case, like Slack, and bigger alerts go to more serious places, maybe your support uh, software, something like that, so that you match the alert severity with the channel that it's used. Uh, so, for example, you wouldn't want to call people for like minor things. Uh, so that's actually something to keep in mind can be tricky to decide you know what is serious and what is not so usually uh, many people do something like this where for minor things you'd use slack or email and for critical things you want to use things like phone or sms where you'd use third-party software like pagerduty or ops genie or um, victor ops or something like that so for this example for this example rather i'm going to be using slack since it's super common everyone here probably uses slack for their team um, and the process is similar if you're using something like Microsoft Teams or something like that. Okay. Now, uh, the second thing that we need to do is to set up this notification channel. So in the tutorial at the end of today's session, what you'll find is a process for getting a uh, webhook URL. So this is what I have over here. I have the URL for my Slack channel. And you can see, I'm just gonna open the screen a bit more. On this side, I have a Slack channel that I've set up called uh, Aftar Grafana notifications because it's a demo, it's just for me. And this is where all my Grafana notifications are gonna get sent. You can see I had a lot of notifications uh, earlier today when, when things are happening. So you wanna give your notification channel a name. I'm gonna select Slack as the type of um, a notification channel. And you can set all of these different parameters. So you can make it the default, such that this is sent whenever an alert goes out. Uh, you can also include images uh, of the graph so that you can actually uh, have that uh, in, in, the, um, in the place that the, someone is looking at it. So that's often useful. You can see like, you know, what the graph was before. Then you have something called disable the resolve message. So you see over here, uh, there's a message that says, okay, when things go back to normal, you can disable or enable that. And then you can set reminders about like how often you wanna be reminded when something goes wrong. So what I've done is just pasted in the, the webhook URL here. Um, and then I'm giving my uh, Slack bot a name. And then you can also mention different people. So in this case, I've just mentioned the whole channel so that everyone is in the channel just gets notified when something is go wrong. That seems pretty reasonable. So we're gonna save and then go back to the actual um, graph where we just have to pick from the different notification channels we've set up. In this case, I wanna select Slack. And then you select a message uh, or you type a message 
that tells you, um, you know, what's going on so that when someone is reading this, um, they know what, uh, what the issue is. So I've just said, you know, this is, this is what the, this is what the notification is about. We save. Our notifications should be set up. Let's uh, test the rule. So this will tell you what is going on. And in this case, we can see right now, because my memory is at like 6% or so uh, use, uh, the conditions are false. But what happens if we change this, um, this, this condition to be, let's say 4% such that like, obviously the memory now is gonna be uh, greater than uh, 4%. I'm gonna save this. And uh, I'm also gonna change this for period for two minutes such that uh, we don't have to wait too long. So I'm gonna save this and then we're gonna watch this uh, Slack channel over here to see uh, when things uh, start happening. In the meantime, while we wait for that, I wanna take you through how alerts using for work in Grafana. So as I mentioned, this whole idea of for is that the condition is true for a certain period of time. We're gonna be looking at memory usage and the rule is that it needs to be greater than some percentage over, na over five minutes. And how it actually works is, these are alert states again, you remember them from a few minutes ago. How it actually works is that, you know, at a certain period of time, I'm gonna call this T minus one, your average memory is below the threshold and your default state when you start is gonna be okay. Everything is gonna be okay when you, when you start off. Then what happens when the memory goes over the threshold, you move from okay to pending. So this pending only happens when you have a four in your uh, alert rule. And then you stay at pending as long as you haven't um, met the time that the alert needs to be evaluated for. So in this case, it's five minutes. So for the next five minutes, T plus one, T plus two, T plus three, T plus four, we're gonna stay at pending as long as that, uh, that um, value is over the threshold value, which is in 95%. So you can see over here, the values are always over 95 and you're gonna stay at pending. Until you hit T plus five, then you've satisfied this four condition and you're gonna to move to alerting. Then what happens is, now that I've sent out the notification uh, through Slack and maybe I upgrade my uh, configuration on uh, Timescale Cloud or something like that such that I have more memory uh, available, uh, then what might happen is the memory might drop, say 10 minutes later, T plus 10, um, and the rule then becomes false and then we go back to okay. So that's actually how these alerts with four work. I'm gonna exit out of this. And now let me refresh this page. That might've been less than two minutes. Okay, so now you can actually see that um, in this graph, I have uh, the pending state has been triggered at a certain time. So this was uh, one thirty, maybe one minute ago. And you can see the time, the yellow, the orange line when the pending state was triggered. And uh, we're going to see, let me refresh again when the alert state gets triggered and we should see an alert in the Slack channel. Um, I might have gone through things a bit quicker than ideal. And just on time, you see the alert just got sent in Slack. You can see the message that we put high memory. Um, and then you can also see the values and the specific metric that the, the alert was triggered on. So that's an example of how alerts got sent in Slack. You can see the Slack was there everyone gets a notification to go and check it out. And then seeing what happens in our Grafana dashboard, let me just zoom in here. Okay, that's too much zoom. Um, seeing what happened in our Grafana dashboard, you can see the orange line is when pending came into place. And then the red line is when the alerting state happens. You can see that this difference for uh, in between the pending and alerting states to show you like when things went wrong. And then if we examine it a bit more in the alert, um, the alert panel, let me just uh, make this a bit smaller. And we go to state history, it'll actually show you like, okay, at this time, these are the different uh, states that this alert went through. Uh, and of course, if we test the rule right now, we can see that the condition is actually true. And the state again is, um, is pending because 
uh, it needs to evaluate it every two minutes. What I'm gonna do is so that we don't have more Slack notifications as we do this, I'm gonna change this back to 90% and I'm gonna save it. And then we should see when we come to revisit Slack that this will come back to normal. Okay, let's go through the next um, example, uh, which is alerts without form. So if you have any questions, please put them in the Q&A feature. I see these questions coming in. Um, and uh, so the next one that we're gonna be doing is gonna be about disk usage. This is gonna be a simpler alert, which is alerts without form. Uh, in this case, we're going to say disk usage greater than 80% using PagerDuty as a channel. So let's um, let's go back there. So I'll come to this about how the life cycle works. Going back to my Grafana dashboard, and you can see over here when when the when the alert went away, we get a message saying, okay, in, uh, in Slack to tell us that like this situation has actually been resolved from the metric point of view. Uh, you can then investigate what's going on. So for disk usage, we're gonna repeat the same process. We're gonna create a new alert. And I'm gonna call this um, high disk on high disk usage on taxi DB. And in this case, one thing to uh, notice is that I wanna evaluate it every one minute, but in this case, I don't wanna have a four. So I'm gonna select the four uh, to be zero minutes. And this is because for something like disk usage, it really doesn't fluctuate all that much. So you wanna, it can really only increase. So I don't really need to wait to know that something is true for a certain period of time before I alert. Uh, and in this case, uh, for the alert rule, I wanna select the last function. So that tells me the last value in my time series. And in this case, my query that I'm monitoring is query B. So I'm gonna select B. Um, in the drop down, and I want to know it from uh, one minute to go until now. And let's say the disk is above 90%, or was it 80%? Let's just say 90 for now. And then we're going to keep the default. Um, uh, and then we need to keep the default uh, from, from um, the, the default value for, for no data and alerting. So in this case, if there's no data, I'm just gonna set it to no data. And then alerting, I'm gonna set it to alerting. And then we're gonna select the notification channel. Um, so in this case, I said I'm gonna use PagerDuty. Let's see how you set up PagerDuty. Um, and then, so when, so when we get to this notification, this is the notification channel setup page, we're going to uh, give it a name. So in this case, I'm called it the DevOps team PagerDuty. Select Pager Duty from the drop down, and then you want to uh, fiddle with all these parameters and make sure that, like, your uh, if it's your default, you select it, you include images and whatnot. The thing about Pager Duty is that it's a super popular uh, tool for managing support and incident response for medium and large teams. Often, if you're a small team of maybe 10 people or something, you might not need it. But once you start growing beyond that, you probably do. Uh, need uh, some sort of software to coordinate it. In this case, all that's needed is an integration key. I haven't put my integration key here, uh, the real one, otherwise you'll be able to send me notifications randomly and wake me up in the middle of the night. Uh, but in this case, I just uh, you, you put your key in here and then you can set a severity for your cases. So moving into pager duty over here, you can set a severity where the things are, you know, uh, critical, or whether something is just a warning or something like that, that helps differentiate what happens. And then uh, you can also set things to auto resolve, which is similar to when things go back to an okay state, it gets um, resolved and, and the issue gets closed. So that's how you set up PagerDuty, you need your integration key. Uh, I've got just a, a PagerDuty account over here and then the tutorial that we have at the end of today's session takes you through how to navigate in PagerDuty, where to find it uh, for the sake of time we're um, going to skip that part today. Now, going back to the, the actual alerting screen, what we're gonna do is select pager duty. I've called this after our PD, page PD for pager duty. And I'm also gonna select Slack. So this shows you, you can actually set up multiple notification channels for the same, um, 
the same alert that you're that you're monitoring. And in this case, for the message, I'm going to select this usage is above 80%, and I might want to upgrade my storage plan or alter the compression setting. So time scale uh, has really good compression. So often, if you're running out of disk, it might be useful to alter the compression setting such that uh, you can compress your old data or set up some sort of automated scheme to uh, to uh, compress data that's older than a certain period of time. I'm going to select save, and now that should be in effect. Just to demo this for you, I'm gonna make the memory, disk usage is currently 22. So I'm gonna make the disk usage, let's say if it's above 15, and uh, for zero minutes, so I'm just gonna select save. And while we wait for the, the alert to trigger here, let's see actually how this alert works when there's no fall. So the example here is disk usage and uh, disk usage greater than 80%. So in this case, as I mentioned, the alert goes, uh, starts in okay as a default state. And because there's no fall, once the threshold is hit, it goes straight to alerting. And then uh, once the alert rule, once, once the alert rule has actually been um, satisfied, the notification gets sent off. That was actually a call from PagerDuty if you experienced a um, uh, delay in the sound because they're calling me to telling me that there's, a, there's an issue going on with my system. And then say as an engineer, I then go and take action and go and upgrade the disk um, capacity. It drops to 40% and then um, the rule goes false and we go back to okay. Now let's take a look at our pager duty. Let me just refresh. And you can see there's a new, let me go back to my demo. There's a new uh, notification that's being triggered, high disk usage on the taxi DB. It tells you the service that it's running on. So in this case, I have a whole database for taxis that it's been running on and uh, then I can take action on it. In this case, I'm just going to uh, resolve it because um, because uh, it's just a, just a test that we're doing. And I'm gonna put this back, uh, the threshold back to 90% so that we don't have uh, recurring notifications, um, you know, now that I've demonstrated that point. Okay, so you notice here, you know, the difference when you have four uh, cases with four and cases with not four, you don't have these pending lines and these orange lines on the, on the graphs. Um, and in this case for disk usage, you know, one, whenever you have an alert in Grafana, you'll see this growing red uh, thing around it. And in this case, there's just uh, a, a line that tells you alert, an alert happened at this period of time. Okay, um, there was a question that I just wanna answer live about, you know, when things go from pending to alert, do we need, is it the same timing from um, going from alert to okay? And that's not, uh, so that's based on the time that your rule actually gets evaluated. So let me show you, um, say if we go back to this uh, memory used one, that's based on if you evaluate it every one minute, um, the, it, it might go, if it's true, it might go back to uh, pending, but if it's not true, then it'll go back to okay. So you don't actually need every, um, you don't need to actually wait the same amount of time in between. It will uh, go back as soon as it sees that that condition is not uh, true anymore. It'll go back to okay. The pending only applies when the condition is true and it needs to move um, from true to alerting. The move backwards from alerting to okay doesn't actually uh, need that time to evaluate. It'll only be uh, based on this parameter called evaluate every rather than the four. So that's just to answer Eden's question live, uh, but I will also type that answer out later for other people to look at. But I thought that was relevant, so that's why I wanted to mention it. Keep those questions coming in, and they might also be answered live if it's, if it's relevant to what I'm doing right now. So the third thing that I'm gonna do today, the third and final example that we're gonna um, look at before we move into question and answer is this, uh, example of service aliveness. So this is something uh, super common. You want to know whether your database is up or not. 
And in this case, um, I'm going to be using Ops Genie as the example of the notification channel that I'm going to use. So let's uh, move back to the dashboard. And I'm going to open up Ops Genie in the right hand side here. So you can see the query that I'm using. The thing to notice here is that my status is basically one or zero. So when status is okay, it's one. And when it's not okay, it'll go back to zero. So I'm gonna create an alert based on that in mind where I'm gonna call this um, taxi DB service status alert. And I'm gonna evaluate it every one minute for let's say two minutes in this case. You don't want your database to be down for too long. I think two minutes is enough to account for things like network lag and stuff like that. Uh, and then in this case, you wanna know, again, using the last function, um, and the query is gonna be query A, and I'm gonna set it from um, five minutes ago till now is fine. And in this case, we're gonna say is below one, because that's the value that we have. Uh, over here. And then we're going to keep the default uh, no data and alerting uh, states here when there's um, no data or an execution or a timeout. You'll see now in this case what, with the demo that I'm going to show you when this no data state is going to come into effect. But before we do that, let's just take a look at how we set up uh, Ops Genie. Again, very similar to PagerDuty, Ops Genie is uh, a bit more advanced software for things like managing support and incident management. It allows you to configure who gets notified on what platforms like email, SMS, voice, or using a mobile app. And um, in this case, what you need to do is select Ops Genie from the drop-down menu and then put in your API key. So this is uh, something that you can find uh, under um, the uh, Teams uh, settings there. You can refer to the tutorial that we have in our docs for how to, um, how to set that up. And uh, you can have some uh, configurations here such as auto close and override priority. If you wanna manage the priority and whether you wanna auto close your incidents uh, after the, the alert state uh, has gone back to okay, essentially. Okay, so that's how you set up PagerDuty. The main thing here is you need an API key. The docs will show you how to get that API key. I don't wanna expose it to everyone uh, over here. Um, and then over here in notifications, I just select uh, after our DevOps team two, because that's what the, the Ops Genie is called, it's gonna notify my whole team. And then the notification message, I'm gonna say, uh, red alert database is down. It's very important, uh, capital letters are needed for something like this. Okay, so uh, in this case, if we just test this rule, we can say, uh, we can see the state is okay and the conditions are false. Uh, but what if I were to do something that would trigger the database to go down? So what I'm gonna do here is open up uh, my window in Timescale Cloud. So this is the hosted and managed version of Timescale. It's just the easiest way I like to spin up databases uh, to avoid having um, multiple timescales running in my like Docker or my you know Kubernetes and worrying about ports and stuff like that uh, and ports getting um, uh, like mixed up and, and things like that with various uh, applications that I have running. So what I'm gonna do here is just power off the service that simulates the database going down. Uh, usually you wouldn't do this by mistake because you have a power of confirmation, but who knows, it might happen. Uh, a more common scenario is when, um, say you're running this not in a hosted and managed scenario, uh, but in your own infrastructure and um, you, know, you run out of resources in a certain cluster or something like that, your database might go down. And in this case, I can see my service has been powered off. So what's gonna happen is that we're gonna get some alerts here in a moment. Uh, I'm just going to um, refresh. And we can actually see, let me, um, when I can actually see the database status is zero right now. Uh, so say this is one, it's gone to zero and uh, it's gonna evaluate for a certain period of time and then go back to, um, it's gonna go into an alerting state uh, pretty soon. So let me refresh. And um, while we wait for that to happen, and while I keep my Ops Genie in the alert uh, panel, 
I'm going to take you through what's going to happen with some of these other notifications that we've set up. So, um, okay. So this is the thing that we're monitoring. Uh, we're going to look at alerts with no data here in this case. So because of the whole service aliveness, when your data source is not working, uh, that might affect other alerts that you've set up. So in this case, I'm just going to monitor uptime and the rule is going to be when the up is less than one as we've established. So when you actually have data, everything is going to be okay. Um, it might go to pending, it might go to alerting, but there's data available. But when the data is actually null, it goes to no data because there's no data available to evaluate that rule. But then once data comes back, say you turn on your database, you go and figure out what's going on, that um, alerting state goes back to okay, such that there's data available to evaluate the rule and then everything is okay. Um, now, that, uh, that's how the, the alerts with no data works. You can see it's like a separate state from alerting. Um, I'm getting a call right now from my ops genie to tell me that something is going on. Uh, let me refresh the page. And we should see that there's something going on. Let's see. Usually it takes a few minutes. Um, but um, what we can also see that's interesting here, I just opened it up in Slack, going back to the, the, the demo, is that I'm getting a bunch of no data. So you can see pending is over here. I'm getting a bunch of no data. Um, Oops, Genie, and let me actually put Slack as this, um, as a notification channel. So you can see here, there's a bunch of no data for things like high memory on the taxi database and the sustained high memory and, uh, and things like that. Because um, these notifications that had rules to evaluate now have no data to evaluate those rules. So you can see how it's uh, distinguished between when alerting is happening and when um, no data is available. So in this case, for another, uh, my actual alerting system, uh, I've got the databases down. So you can see it's going down here. And then in Ops Genie, hopefully the uh, alert will populate here. Uh, okay. I think it might take a while to refresh, but uh, such is life with uh, live demos. Um, and so you can see my service is actually down. Yeah, the status is uh, zero. Um, and over here you can see there's no data. These gray lines show and you can actually see the memory uh, is not being populated here. So uh, we'll give it a few more minutes for Ops Genie to come back. Uh, let's see if it, if it does, but in the meantime, I'm going to take you through a recap and next steps for what we've done because we've actually come to the end of our live demo uh, just on time. And uh, then we're going to go into answering your questions. So put them in if you, if you haven't already. So today we did a few things. We went through alerting principles in Grafana. We talked about why alerts are important and when you should use them. We also looked at a mental model for understanding how alerts work in Grafana using the scenario of monitoring a database where I took you through the alert life cycles of different types of alerts. And then we defined alert rules for things like aliveness and memory and disk usage. And then lastly, um, and then in those alert rules, we looked at alerts with four and different aggregate functions like last and average. And then lastly, we set up notification channels using things like Slack, Ops Genie and PagerDuty. Uh, secondly, as a summary, I wanted to leave you with this uh, diagram. So, you know, I was using these state diagrams throughout the, the presentation today. This is just a summary of all the possible alerts to help you, uh, all the state transitions to help you reason about this when you're implementing um, alerts in Grafana yourself. You can take a screenshot right now, or you can um, view this in the slide deck that will send this to you. Uh, after today's presentation, probably tomorrow or Friday. Um, this is just a summary that uh, I found useful to put together because there's nothing like this in the Grafana docs, unfortunately. 
uh, just to help you quickly understand, you know, once you're in a sudden state, what happens, uh, you know, depending on the, the data that you get in. Okay, so um, if you haven't taken a screenshot, there's gonna be, uh, this gonna get sent to you. So that's the second thing I wanted to leave you for, just to help you reason about it. So what's next? Um, we're going to um, put up a alerting tutorial, and it's actually up right now at this, um, at this uh, short link. There's gonna be a alerting tutorial for you to replicate the demo that I've done today. So if you wanna try this out on a toy system with some toy data uh, before implementing it on your real system, uh, you can do that in our alerting tutorial. Uh, if you wanna use timescale in your monitoring setup, we have just made available the Prometheus, the new Prometheus adapter, as well as some Helm charts to spin up timescale and Prometheus and Grafana and Kubernetes. Uh, you can look at this uh, GitHub link on the screen uh, to navigate to that. You can also join our community Slack if you have any questions uh, where you can find me, Timescale co-founders, as well as other engineers. We have people like uh, Grafana contributor, Timescale's uh, Sven Klim, who uh, is always helping people about Grafana related things. Uh, and you can also get support from other members of the community who have experience in implementing these kinds of things. Um, you know, they're always active in Timescale Slack. And if you're ready to get started with Timescale, uh, the easiest way to get started is through Timescale Cloud. You'll get $300 in credits to start if you hit the link um, on the screen in front of you. And then two last things before we move into Q&A. Uh, we wanna hear from you, the feedback from today's session. Uh, if you have any ideas for future topics that we should cover or uh, any feedback of things you enjoyed or didn't like, uh, please uh, fill out this feedback uh, survey that we'll send you in the follow-up email as well. And then you are also the first to know that we're gonna have another session in our Grafana 101 uh, sessions of uh, webinars or series of webinars rather. Uh, this is gonna be about getting started with templating and sharing. So I saw we had some questions about template variables and stuff like that. Uh, so I'm gonna take you through exactly how those works and when you can use them and when can't you use them. Um, and that's gonna be in about a month's time on Wednesday, 17th of June. So you can mark your calendars for that and you'll get an RSVP link in the follow-up email. So again, thank you so much for spending this time with me today. Uh, we're gonna take your questions and I'll be answering them uh, by a text in the Q&A function in Zoom. So please put them in um, so that we can, uh, we can answer them. I'm gonna go and mute. Um, and uh, again, thanks so much for joining us for today's webinar. Put your questions in to the Q&A if you haven't already.